Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter. So, welcome to now. This is the DJI Mavic Mini 2, and it's a drone that's been out for a minute, but it's still the best drone you can get for travel, and it might be the future of drones in general. So in this video, I want to show you three things. One is a footage and wind test to show you what this little drone is capable of, two, all the features that make this such a great drone for travel, and three, what the DJI Mavic Mini 2 shows us about the future of Ultra Portable. So the DJI Mavic Mini 2 is the successor to the DJI Mavic Mini 1, but let's just get this out of the way. In 2021, there's basically no reason to get a Mavic Mini 1 because the Mavic Mini 2 does such a good job of fixing all of the weak points of the Mavic Mini 1. So that's out of the way. Don't get the Mavic Mini 1. If you're shopping for a small ultra portable drone, the Mavic Mini 2 out of the Mavic Mini line is the one to get. Some of the features of the Mavic Mini 2 that have improved upon the worst parts of the Mavic Mini 1 are first, the use of OcuSync 2.0, which gives you reliable connections between the remote and the drone, which has a range of 10 kilometers. In my testing, you can really push the range of the two within its 30 minutes of battery life. The wind rating is now level five, which means it can handle winds from 29 to 38 kilometers per hour, the same as the Mavic Air 2. So you've got this very small drone that can fly in conditions similar to the larger Mavic Air 2. Now, it's not quite as stable when it's really windy, meaning your shots will tend to shift around if a wind gust comes by your drone, but that's something that's hard to avoid because the Mini 2 is so physically small, but you can compensate for a bit using the Cine mode on the remote. The remote, which has a bigger footprint than the drone itself, comes with a lot of features that make that size trade-off worth it, even for travelers. The remote has a physical button for three different modes. One is for sport mode, which gives you a bit more power, normal mode, and cine mode, which gives you a little additional stability for smooth video shots. As you can see here on a very windy day, the difference between normal and cine mode forces the drone to work harder to maintain its stability for a steady shot. But in both cases, the image is really stable, especially when you consider what the Mavic Mini looks like from the outside. The little but strong motors combined with a good gimbal results in reliably steady shots, Oh, and the wind warning never appeared during any of these flights. It's really convenient to have physical buttons easily accessible on the front of the remote here. The return to home button is also here, which brings your drone back if you can't orient yourself. But since the Mavic Mini 2 doesn't have any front-facing sensors, you want to make sure that you set the return altitude to the highest legal maximum for where you are through the DJI app so that your drone flies over everything that might be on its way when it's trying to get back to you, Otherwise, if you set that return to home altitude too low, your drone could fly right into a tree. So aside from the lack of front facing sensors, all of the features I mentioned before are pretty impressive, especially when you consider just how small the Mavic Mini 2 is. Basically, the Mini 2 has the footprint of an iPhone and it's really hard to get around just how small this drone is until you get it into your hands. It feels a bit dinky because of its small size and light weight, but it's a capable drone in most of the ways that matter and it only weighs 249 grams, just under the 250 gram limit for registration in many countries around the world. And one other bonus of this larger remote is that you can use it to charge your phone. So when the phone is plugged into the remote and you're flying your drone, it can also charge up your phone, which means one less thing you have to worry about when you're traveling. Now, if you've been wondering what the footage is like from this drone, you've been seeing a lot of that in this video up until this point, and it looks pretty good. Out of the box, the Mini 2 comes set at 2.7K at 30 frames per second, but I have found 4K at 30 frames per second to be sharper and produce an overall better image. So if you're using the Mavic Mini 2, I'd recommend you go into the settings and set it to 4K 30 frames per second for the best overall look. The dynamic range from the Mini 2 is pretty good, a bit over contrasty in some situations, and in lower light settings like around sunset, the sensor does struggle. But once you learn the conditions and angles this drone does best in, you can get some really nice shots. For me personally, as someone going from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic Mini 2, the footage almost made me reconsider. But then going into the settings and playing around with them, I realized that you can get a very nice image from the Mavic Mini 2 and the size trade-offs and portability make it worth it for me because I already have a very heavy gear backpack and cutting out some of that weight from a drone just makes it worth it and a nice trade-off. Not only is a lighter backpack an advantage, having a drone 
this small just makes it that much easier to take out and take with you and fly more. You're much more likely, and I found myself bringing my drone more places just because it is so small and quick to open up and just take a couple of shots wherever I happen to be. It's a lot less cumbersome than a larger drone with a larger remote where you need a charging brick and cables and a whole setup. This thing is just as easy to travel with as my phone. But you might be thinking, hey, the Mavic Air 2, it's not that much bigger than this drone, but the Mavic Mini 2 has a lot of other advantages, especially if you travel frequently. First of all, you can charge a drone via USB, something you can't do on the Mavic Air 2 or larger drones. So you don't need to bring an extra charger. You can plug the Mini 2 into a portable power bank, your car, or any USB port, really. It's not the fastest charge, but you don't realize how cumbersome having to carry around a charging brick with cables is until you don't have to do it. You can also transfer your video and photo files over USB-C, but the trick to doing this is to first remove the camera protector, then turn the drone on unplugged, then plug it in. You want to remove the camera cover since turning on the Mini 2 will activate the moving gimbal, and if you plug it in with the drone off, it will go straight into charging mode. That, by the way, is how you go into charging mode, is to plug in the Mini 2 while it's completely turned off. One bonus tip about going from transferring to charging mode is if you transfer your files from your drone to your laptop and you leave it plugged in, it's going to completely drain the battery. It doesn't automatically go into charging mode. So what you want to do is transfer your files over. So begin the transfer, then unplug the drone, turn it off, then plug it back in, and that'll put it into charging mode so that you can make sure that your battery is charged up for your next flight. So the portability benefits of the Mavic Mini 2 are pretty nice. So you can be out on the road one day and just have your laptop with you, fly your drone, bring it back, download the footage onto your laptop, and then use that same laptop to charge your drone and get it ready for another flight. You can also change out the batteries if you want to swap out batteries for longer flight times. You can do that literally just by lifting up the back here and yeah, taking your battery out. There you've got a new battery. Put that back in and uh, you're ready to go for another flight. Look, the portability of this drone is really hard to let go of once you get used to it. I travel with my drone everywhere. It's pretty much with me on every trip and with me on the road for long periods of time. And I can't imagine now going back to carrying a larger drone for my travels. Not to mention that the Mini 2 is also noticeably quieter than its larger cousins. So when you're flying it up high, most drones, you're not gonna be able to hear them very well, but the Mini 2 becomes virtually silent and you can fly it a little bit lower and a little bit less far away and still be somewhat inconspicuous. It's not perfect though, and you will be giving up some things for that portability, but all of those things can and probably will be fixed with the Mavic Mini 3, and it's probably where the future of travel drones and drones in general is going. Of those things you'll be giving up, first, front-facing sensors. Front-facing sensors are really useful for things like return to home. So when you use the return to home feature and the drone is coming back to you, it helps to have a sensor on the front so it doesn't just crash into a tree on the way back. Front-facing sensors also give you options like being able to include automated flight modes like active track, where the drone will automatically follow you when you're running or walking or biking. That way you can focus more on the things that you want to shoot rather than where your drone is. But without front-facing sensors, that becomes really dangerous because it could just crash into a person, crash into you or crash into a tree, something like that. So without front-facing sensors, you really miss out on the best parts of those two features. But there is a clue on the Mavic Mini 2 that DJI is probably considering front-facing sensors on the Mini 3, and those are on the front here. So on the front, you've got this light here, which you can basically customize to different colors when the drone is flying. Okay, nice kind of customization feature, perhaps not that great. But you've also got on the side of it, these two little air holes right here, which are used on other larger drones for optical avoidance sensors. My thinking is, that those are probably placeholders for a Mini 3, and the light here is probably another sensor that they'll be adding eventually. So right now, those spaces on this drone aren't occupied, but I'm guessing that they're reserving this space on the front here for those front-facing sensors once they can figure out how to shrink it all down and then keep the total weight of this drone under 250 grams. Another thing I'd like to see improved upon between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 would be these propellers. 
So you can see here that they are screwed on. And yeah, DJI does give you the little screwdriver. You need to take these propellers off and replace them. But larger drones in the Mavic line, like the Air 2 and the Pro, you can just push those down and then use the latch system to take the propellers off easily. You can't really do that on the Mini 2. You've got to unscrew these little propellers. And it would be nice not to have to carry an extra tool around just to swap out a propeller. It'd be a little bit more convenient. Oh, and while we're nitpicking here, the gimbal cover is also a pain to line up just right, but that's a standard issue on pretty much all the Mavic line drones. Finally, the last thing I'd like to see on the Mini 3 would be a darker gray color option like you have on the rest of the Mavic lineup. But all those things I mentioned are pretty easily doable in a Mavic Mini 3, and it seems like DJI is going that way anyway. You put some front-facing obstacle sensors on this drone, improve the image quality just a little bit, and I think it just becomes the best drone for pretty much most people. Even right now, the footage between the Mavic Mini 2 and the Mavic Air 2 is hard to tell apart. My friend Mike from Drone Supremacy did a video doing just that, seeing if you could tell the difference. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can check it out. But the footage of the Mini 2 is really good, and again, considering how small this drone is and all the other things it can do, makes it really hard once you get used to that portability to go back to a larger drone. Unless you really want the higher quality images you can get on the Mavic Pro 2, for example, or the front facing sensors you get starting on the Air 2, then if you travel frequently, the Mavic Mini 2 is the drone to get, and it might just be the future of drones in general. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I will see you in the next video. Old drones, problem. Oh, eight thirty.